the simplest way to polish your paint. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. Today we're gonna explore a very cost-effective, simple, easy way to polish your vehicle without fancy tools. Look, we are going to have polishers. They are going to be more expensive than a palm sander. Right. And we're not talking about them in this video. This is a video just for you. If you don't know what to use and you have a palm sander in your garage, it's an amazing tool to gloss up your paint. Exactly. Now, you'll notice that we have a few other things in front of us. One of them is a bowl. And what's the bowl here for? Well, Ivan, we're doing the most basic bare bones polishing method, right? right. Like you don't have all the fancy tools. The bowl is actually our DIY pad cleaner. Right, exactly. So basically what we're doing with the bowls, in the bowls we have half a gallon of water and I'm gonna put half a cap full of rinseless wash. So that's a stronger, oh, half a cap full, not a full Yeah, cap full. exactly. Okay, so this is the 256 dilution. Yeah. To one. Same dilution ratio that we always have. Now, we're using electricity and water together. We have to be careful. We'll just be dipping the pad itself into the top of the water. And if you have a concern with that, just put a little amount in your bowl that you can't dip further, you can't dip your machine in there. I can't wait to show them how we clean these pads. It's yeah. a beautiful system that you designed. Uh, as a one-stop shop for detailing education, we really appreciate you spending time with us. If you're finding value, please subscribe, like, and we'll continue to bring you awesome content. Like exactly. This. Now, the reason we want a clean pad is we have brand new pads on the machine. And you could take 10, 12, 15 pads to polish a car, or you can do it with one pad. And the reason we can do it with one pad is after every section that we do, we clean our pads, effectively making it a new pad again. Not every door, every section pads. Right, so never put clean polish on a dirty pad. It's a very easy way to remember. If you're going to spray your polish, no, wait, I have to clean the pad. So that's a very easy way to remember it. Never put clean polish on a dirty pad. We are in our new garage, but it's a very old building. <laughs> yeah. And the series of videos that this is a part of is sort of a back to basics. And so, Ivan, what are the basic things that people would need to polish their vehicle using the system we're about to show? Well, first they have to start with a clean, decontaminated vehicle, which you'll see in the video in the description below. But after that, you don't need much. You need some form of polisher, and that polisher can be your arm. You can hand polish with a microfiber towel if you want to, but trust me, you don't want to. Please don't. Yeah, it's just for the, we paid $19 for these uh, little machines here. They're simple, they're basic, they do the job. Then you have a pad, you have the polish, and a bit of rinseless wash to clean the pad off, and we're good to go. Now we're coming out with a dual action polisher and a rotary polisher. Right. What is the difference between like our 25 millimeter dual action and a palm sander in the garage? Right, so the palm sander has a three millimeter action. The, the dual action we're coming out with has a 25 millimeter action, meaning that the pad not only rotates, but it goes off center by three to 25 millimeters. Uh, the industry standard sizes normally are eight, 15, and 21. Those in the detailing space are the ones the dimensions we see the most often. The bigger the number, the more aggressive it is, the faster it's going to get the job accomplished. But the smaller it is, the better gloss you're gonna get. And that's why we finish with a rotary, because it has a zero offset, meaning that it's just glossing the paint. Now, with the machine like this, it's great, it's a short stroke. If you've never polished before, it makes your life simple, it's easy. One-handed, it's not difficult to hold on to, it's not an expensive tool. If you decide this is the only car you'll ever polish in your life, you haven't gone out and spent two, three, four, five, maybe a hundred or a thousand dollars on a machine, you don't need to do that. Some of them are getting quite pricey, <laughs> yeah. this ones, yeah. This works great, and you might already have one at home. And if you do, all you need to do is add a pad and add a few little chemicals, and off we go. All right, so let's talk about our mindset now, we have clean paint. It's been decontaminated, yep. it's dry. Now if it's a little bit dripping, we do have a slightly damp pad as we're polishing, so a few drips here and there, if it's just water dripping down, you're gonna be fine. Right. Uh, but we've let this dry, so it's a completely dry vehicle. Yeah, and the vibration from the machine will actually draw the water out of the cracks and crevices. Yeah. So that's another thing. Now, from here, we never want to use a dry pad. So 
This is how we're going to clean our pads going forward, but also how we're doing it now. This we, is essentially part of the priming of our pad. Yeah. So we just lightly dip it in the, uh, the bowl there and don't return them to the kitchen after this. And then from there, we put it in another bucket because we don't want to be spraying our beautiful new garage. It will be beautiful one day. It's not there yet. And then we just turn the machine on for a couple seconds. It spins out the excess moisture. At maximum speed for the spin out, correct? Well, this only has one speed. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, that makes it really easy. And then while it's still spinning, one spray of the polish. We like to say, pull the trigger like you're angry at it. If you're having issues with your trigger in the gold standard polish, firm trigger pull on a moving pad, thousands of tiny droplets, and then you have that wet pad, your pad is primed. You're yeah, ready to and go. It's, wet is probably not the right term, damp is a better term. Did I term. say wet? Uh, yeah. yeah, lightly damp. Yeah. yeah. But Ivan, surely we're missing something. Well, for a lot of people, we would be missing something, and that would be taping off the moldings. The gold standard polish, you don't need to tape off the moldings because it's not going to damage them. It's actually going to clean them. Now, this is a brand new vehicle, so we're not worried about cleaning the molding or removing oxidation from it. But if it were a, you know, a vehicle with a bit of experience behind its wheels, then yes, we would actually want to polish those moldings. But you can polish trim with gold standard polish. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So off we go. Where would you like me to start? Uh, start back there. We'll meet in the middle. All right, perfect. And now to clean the pads. So a little dip. Now, am I going to agitate uh, the pad at all, or do yeah, I like to agitate it just a little bit, and then give it a quick spin. For oh, for beginners, by the way. For beginners, Ivan, how many passes do they do up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right uh, in their section, and how big should their section size be? I like to have a section size that's no wider than my shoulders. Now, I did half the hood, but. I was extending it and I moved myself. But if you're just doing, this fender is a good section size. Half the door is a good section size. You did that back fender, that's And then a good I went up to size. about here. But it essentially, yeah. it's, you know. Yeah, you don't need to, you don't want to extend it too far and then spin it out in the bucket. So you can see what's come out of the pad. And we continue polishing. So as we polish, it's important to note that we're not going after perfect paint here. In fact, we don't teach going after perfect paint. You only have a finite amount of clear coat. So what we're doing with this yellow waffle pad is we're removing some surface defects and scratches. The appearance of those are going away. The idea here is shiny, clean paint. Ivan, the beautiful part about the gold standard polish is I'm not going out of my way to polish this trim because it's brand new. Right. I'm not getting any sling, no, and I'm not getting any dust, and I'm not permanently damaging this trim with this polish. It's perfectly safe to just kind of oh, glide over a little bit here and there. Yeah. You can do it intentionally, you can butt up against it. It just makes it so simple. Yeah, no effort, no problems whatsoever. You'll notice on the hood here, we have this black matte decal. And I don't want to polish the matte black decal, so I've avoided it. If you're not confident in your control in the machine, put a bit of tape on there. But this what? is the one area on the vehicle that I won't be polishing. 
And one thing too is you can try to go into the corners with your polisher or if it makes you feel better, you can put a little gold standard polish on a rag. Yeah. And you can work the corners of your glass or windows if exactly. you're trying to get to those. Yeah. One little trick here is to flip the hatch up a little bit. You're not putting a ton of pressure on your polisher or your dual action sander anyway. It's just the weight of the machine. So you can get right along the edge there. You're not going into the lights, right? So flipping it up gives you a lot more real estate to work with, or at least it feels a lot more convenient. You can totally polish headlights, uh, tail lights. You can go over emblems like that, just real gentle uh, with the yellow waffle pad. Gold standard polish does not sling, it doesn't dust, so we're not worried about getting into the hatch, right? So it's just super easy to uh, get into all these little nooks and crannies to get a nice shine. And don't be afraid to flip that hatch up for a little bit more convenience. Now, just wanted to show, you can see the accumulation of what we've taken off the paint is now on the pad. It's definitely changed the color from yellow to slightly darker. Yeah, it actually has a reddish tinge to it. Might be overspray from somewhere, but anyways, we need to get that off. So to do so, I'm just gonna dip it in the rinseless wash, just to get the surface of the pad wet. Then we'll massage it in, but at the same time, we're taking an excess of that liquid out of here. And from there, we spin it out in the bucket. And then we apply the gold standard like we're angry at the trigger. One quick, fast spray. And there we have it. Pad is clean, it's damp, it's ready to polish. So Nick, we're done polishing. Yeah. You're cleaning your pad for the last time. Yep. I've already cleaned mine and look, it's basically a new pad. Absolutely, let me just wring this yeah. out. I'll save you from getting any splatter, but that's just slightly damp. I mean, these look brand new. Yeah, they are. You know, you wow. can easily get four or five vehicles out of one pad if you maintain it properly. Other brands are gonna try to sell you 10 pads. We want you to buy one. Yeah. That's the DIY way. That's all you need. And you don't need to be changing pads. And actually removing the pad from the machine is hard on the pad and it's also hard on the machine. You need to let that Velcro cool down because all those little hooks are there. They're tight. They, they've been jostled around and that movement creates friction. That friction creates heat. And we don't see and we don't feel that heat, but there's a little micro layer of heat there just between the pad and the Velcro. And if this is still hot, so you just finish polishing and rip it off, uh, our pads are white, the background on them. And if you rip it off while it's still hot, you'll see little black hooks stuck in the Velcro. Now we don't have any because we let it cool down, but if you had ripped it off as soon as you stopped polishing, you'll see little black hooks in the Velcro. And when you see the little black hooks in the Velcro, that means you have less hooks on your pad here, or on your backing plate, and therefore it's gonna wear out sooner. Another thing is if you have a polisher at home, we want you to polish on speed three, for example, right? On right. A dual action polisher. Yeah. You hopefully are not getting much heat. Now this felt like I was on speed four or five. It was vibrating well, quite a bit. Well, it only has one speed. Yeah, exactly. And, it was just one speed. Right, but because of the short orbit of it, so it's only, uh, a three millimeter orbit, and let me look at the specs here. This is 13,000 orbits per minute. If we look at the Milwaukee machines that we've used before, we use them at about 3,000 orbits per minute, but we're using a 21 millimeter machine. On average, rule of thumb, if it's 
five to three millimeters, 12, 13,000 orbits per minute is fine. If you're going eight to 12, you want to keep it around four to 5,000 orbits per minute. 15 and up, you want to keep it between 3,500 or 2,500 and 3,500. Orbits per minute. Orbits per minute. So irregardless of what the speed is, if you can figure out what the speed corresponds to the yeah. OPM, that's right. what to do. And like I said, these are you know clearance, uh, low price things. They only have one speed. But if you're using a palm sander like this that has variable speed, just put it at the maximum speed. You're not gonna create enough heat to damage the vehicle. Okay. So next, we have to wipe off the polish residue and ceramic coat the car. Time to wipe off the polish residue. And we have our rinseless wash bucket here. And in it, we have two short nap towels. Now these short nap towels are great. They are a twist loop, meaning they hold a lot of moisture, but we don't want them holding a lot of moisture at this time. We just want them just damp. If you haven't tried the rinseless wash dampened towel to wipe off your polish, I'm telling you, you're missing out. One thing that you taught me though, Ivan, is you really want to wring it out. I used to have mine sopping wet. What's right. the distinction there? So we just need a little bit of the rinseless wash to basically the surfactants that are in here are going to quickly break down the oils that are in the polish. So the polish has carrier oils. They wipe off easily. It's not an issue. We're not leaving anything on the paint, but this helps break them down quickly. The other advantage of using a dampened towel is extra lubrication. So the rinseless dampened towel gives us that extra lubrication that we want. So we're potentially, there is a scratch risk when you're removing polish. This is mitigating that scratch risk. And finally, it's just much easier to do. Yeah. That's what I like about it. Yeah. It just feels like it works better. Right. I'm just wondering why you say it, but yeah. so once this, you try it, it works. This towel is basically dry, and you actually want to wait till it dries a little bit. Oh, really? So not right away? You're moving moisture around. Let, yeah, yeah. Let the atmosphere take some of that moisture away from you. Uh, then using a, a fluffier or a higher plush towel, we want to just buff the surface. And we call this our buffing towel for a reason. <laughs> And it, it, it's just soft and safe, right? You've polished the paint, you don't want to introduce any scratch risk, so you've got just a super plush towel there. In your yeah, hands. and it's you know a nice, soft, you'd want a baby's blanket made out of this towel. It's just that soft and friendly to use. We're talking about the kind of microfiber that's better than the stuff we put on our body, right? Better than your yeah. bath towel. It's like, uh, why is that? Why do, we, why do detailers always have the nicest towels and then we have like, cardboard that we uh, <laughs> that we use to dry yeah. actually I use a uh, for my bath towel I actually use a, a waffle weave towel so oh really it's lightweight doesn't take up a lot of space very absorbent and soft there you go detailers you know what it is if you're using a detailing towel to dry yourself actually a drying blanket is quite absorbent it <laughs> very Oh, it's so much easier to, to um, buff off the, uh, the excess once it's mostly dry, Evan. Yeah, exactly.